Hi guys, Dr. Glenn from Surgical Teaching here, and welcome to this video on male catheterization. So as you can imagine, male catheterization is one of the most important and commonly performed skills you'll be expected to perform when in hospital. And at the end of this video, you'll understand how to perform it safely and with confidence. Male urethral catheterization is a commonly performed medical procedure that allows the direct drainage of the urinary bladder. It may be performed in patients of all ages, although most commonly, long-term catheters are used in older patients who may have chronic urinary retention. But before we carry on, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new content releases. We can divide the indications for urethral catheterization into therapeutic indications and diagnostic or monitoring indications. Some of the key therapeutic indications include treating acute urinary retention, for example, due to benign prostatic hypertrophy, enabling continuous blood irrigation and drainage, such as in a patient who has hematuria and clots and therefore requires a three way catheter and in bedridden patients who benefit from having indwelling catheters for hygiene reasons. Examples of monitoring or diagnostic indications for catheter insertion include monitoring urine output to help guide fluid resuscitation in critically ill patients or in patients undergoing major surgery, and also in some cases when we're undertaking imaging of the urinary tract or when we need to collect uncontaminated samples of urine. The major contraindication for urethral catheterization in a male is the presence of significant trauma to the lower urinary tract. For example, in patients with pelvic trauma and subsequent tearing injury of the urethra. We should be suspicious of this if the patient has blood at the meatus of the penis or significant perineal hematomas. And if suspected, we need to contact a urologist to rule out the presence of any urethral tear injury before we proceed with any catheterization attempt. In terms of the equipment we need to perform male urinary catheterization, this includes a urinary catheter, which is a male length and typically between 12 and 14 French in size. In some patients who have benign prosthetic hypertrophy, We'll often use a larger lumen catheter, which means it's less likely to coil when hitting the resistance of the enlarged prostate. And also, we may choose to use a coude tip catheter, whose tip is slightly angulated to help aid the passing of the catheter via the narrowed prostatic urethra. The other things we need include a 10 ml syringe of sterile water for inflating the catheter balloon once correctly positioned in the bladder. A syringe of lidocaine gel for anesthesia and lubrication. Sterile gloves. Sterile water or antiseptic solution for cleaning. A catheter bag for collecting the drained urine. And finally, a catheter pack, which typically includes a drape, cotton swabs, a small galley pot and a kidney dish. We start by introducing ourselves to the patient, checking their name and date of birth, then explaining the procedure, why it's needed, and checking for any relevant allergies or contraindications, before finally obtaining their informed consent. We then ask the patient to lie flat on their back and uncover their external genitalia, making sure that we uncover them from umbilicus down to their knees. Then we unwrap our equipment whilst maintaining a septic technique and pour the antiseptic cleaning solution into the small dish. After washing our hands, 
we then put on our sterile gloves. And after tearing a hole in the middle of the drape, we then place the drape over the uncovered area of the patient so that the external genitalia pass through the hole and thus allow access to the penis for catheter insertion. Using your non-dominant hand, pick up the penis and clean around the external meatus and the glands using the antiseptic solution soaked swabs. We do this starting centrally at the meatus and then moving outwards. Having repeated this cleaning motion two to three times, we then instill the local anesthetic lubricating gel whilst holding the penis. Ideally, we should wait approximately one minute so as to give the lidocaine time to anesthetize the urethra. After then placing the kidney dish between the patient's legs, we remove the tip of the plastic sheath which contains the catheter. It's important that we try to avoid directly handling the catheter during its insertion. Whilst feeding the catheter out of the plastic wrapper, we insert it into the urethra whilst maintaining gentle traction on the penis with our non-dominant hand. We should continue to insert the catheter all the way up to the hilt, at which point urine should begin to drain via the hub end of the catheter and as a result will pass directly into the kidney dish which we position between the patient's legs. If urine doesn't immediately drain, we can apply gentle pressure over the bladder and this should initiate drainage. We can then inflate the catheter balloon using the syringe via the specific balloon port, which will specify the amount of volume of sterile water that's needed to fully inflate the balloon. Whilst inflating the balloon, ensure that you observe the patient's face to make sure that they don't feel any significant discomfort, as this would indicate that the tip of the catheter and the balloon may be incorrectly positioned. Having inflated the balloon, we then remove the syringe and attach the catheter back. And we can then gently pull the catheter until resistance is felt, which will indicate that the tip and the balloon are correctly positioned at the bladder neck. We would then remove the trape and the kidney dish. We can then let the patient redress. In the non-circumcised patient, it's really important that we ensure that we replace the foreskin after performing the procedure. Otherwise, this may lead to paraphimosis. In cases where the catheter is meeting resistance, for example due to prostatic enlargement, don't force the catheter. Instead, apply gentle horizontal traction to the penis and rotate the catheter clockwise and then anticlockwise until it successfully passes. If this doesn't work, then we may consider using a larger diameter which is more rigid. For example, a 16 French catheter, or as we mentioned earlier, even a coup d'etat tip catheter, which has a curved tip designed to ease manoeuvring the catheter past the narrow prostatic urethra. If you're still unable to successfully pass the catheter, then ask for help from a senior. As in more difficult cases, where urethral catheterization is impossible, the patient may require a suprapubic catheter. Following the successful insertion of the catheter and ensuring our patient is well, we need to make sure that we document the procedure in the patient's notes. This should include the indication, informed consent, size of the catheter used, the residual volume of urine that was in the bladder, where relevant that the foreskin was replaced, and also any immediate complications that may have occurred. The potential complications that we need to be aware of following male catheterization include 
urinary tract infections and sepsis, hematuria, creation of a false passage through the prostate, for example, by being too aggressive in our insertion technique, paraphimosis, following failure to replace the foreskin, pain and discomfort from the presence of the catheter, and urethral trauma and stricture formation. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great free content. Or, if you want to make learning for med school and board exams easier, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com and check out our expert endorsed videos, high yield revision questions, and our supportive online community. Surgical Teaching was designed by doctors to help students learn smarter. And right now, you can enjoy all of our great content for less, with 20% off our annual premium subscriptions when using the code STYouTube20. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.